What's going on ladies and gentlemen, I hope you're doing well. Welcome back to a new YouTube video. It's your boy Luke here from Certifex Trading as always. Now in today's video, we're going to be diving into and I'm going to be showing you the best entry model that you can be using right now. I've done multiple posts on my Instagram before in the past about this and it's a very simple and logical approach. I'm going to give you an in-depth breakdown and show you a couple of trade recaps as well. And it's a very simple and textbook setup. Uh, you should look for this setup within the first two to three hours of London and New York Open. And I'd highly recommend that you check it out. And I'd highly recommend that you go in ahead and backtest it. At least take, you know, 20, 30 plus trades. Now, I'm going to be honest, right? A lot of people, when they backtest, they take the first two, three, four trades and they lose it. And then you just call it a day and try and look for the next strategy that works. I'm going to be honest with you, right? When you're back testing, you want to think in sample sizes. Even when you're trading in general, you want to be thinking in sample sizes. You don't want to be thinking about the next trade or the trade after that or the trade after that. That's a very bad mentality to adopt. You want to be thinking in sample sizes. So thinking 20, right? Rather than thinking in the next trade, thinking, okay, I took a loss here. So what? We're going to at least get this 20 sample trades out of the way and see what the results are like. If you're losing, then yeah, fair enough. You may need to change a couple of things. It could be something as simple as timing. You will only know what to change if you truly journal in depth, right? I'm going to be making a video on how to journal in depth as well. But, without, you know, that's a separate video. But, you know, enough of that anyway. And like I said, after those 20 trades, if you're profitable, then great. You're doing something right. If you're a break-even trader, then if you're a break-even trader to you, my best ultimate advice is to just focus on cutting your losses. Whatever you're doing is obviously working. You just need to reduce those losses. Many people, when they're at break-even phase, they ruin it and go back into a losing phase just simply because they're trying to change something when in reality, they should focus on trying to just reduce the losses, aka cutting your losses in the trade, okay? Now, jumping back into this video, like I, like I uh, you know, mentioned, first two to three hours of London or New York Open, probably the best time to trade it. It's just catching that momentum. It's probably not the best to trade it in terms of, you know, when price is just consolidating uh, or, you know, it's, it's better to trade it in trending markets when price is impulsing in one direction. So as you can see here, right, we're going to be focusing on this bit of price action here, okay? This is not price action. This is a textbook line setup that I just created to help you understand the logic behind it. And what I will do is I'll show you some live examples as well in the markets. So as you can see here, you have this liquidity here. Price sweeps the liquidity and then aggressively shifts or impulses to the downside. It also works in a bullish market scenario. This is the bearish market scenario, but it also works in a bullish uh, market scenario. I'll show you a great example of that in a minute in the live market. But anyways, price sweeps liquidity, aggressively shifts to the downside. Also change the character here. So what I refer to as a chuck. Then pulls back to a breaker and what you want to be looking for here is rather than because at this point you're probably thinking how do you know it's going to come back to the breaker and not to the extreme well when price is trending a lot you'll often see that it doesn't always pull back to the extreme you're probably already thinking this yourself so it'll always not always but of course nothing's 100 trading don't let me make that mistake nothing is 100 trading but sometimes price won't always pull back to the extreme especially in trending markets when price is aggressively important in one direction it will sometimes only come back to the you know the breaker and then continuation uh you know trading in in the direction of the high uh, high time frame right so what you want to be looking for here is you want to be taking a look looking for an engulfing candle as your entry okay that is the best sort of candle combination you can look for is just an engulfing candle that closes below the previous opposite open candle so in this case you can look for a bullish candle that opens and all, ideally what you want to do uh, what you want to see sorry is you want to see a bearish candle that closes below this previous and that's not a straight line but you, you get where i'm coming from you want to look for a candle that closes below this previous uh, bullish open candle. And you want to wait for that candle to close below. Some people use wicks. That's fine. Obviously, you know, like I said, you want to test it out yourself and see what you think. Don't get me wrong. Some candles will be bigger than, you know, sometimes it will be like a quite a small break. Whatever it is, as long as it's closing below here, uh, uh, below the previous opposite open, in this case, a bullish open candle. You want to be waiting for that combination with that bearish candle to close below it. It's a very simple way to allow you to, you know, get into the trade and uh, in my opinion is, is the best way just because you know rather than blindly setting a limit order off here maybe it stops above here you know sometimes price will you know take you out here and then go in your direction whereas if you you know sometimes it might even you might even just enter here blindly and then price just plow through stop loss and continue higher whereas if you're waiting for that bearish engulfing candle in this scenario and in a bullish market a bullish engulfing candle then it will just give you the added confirmation because remember a bearish engulfing that closes below the previous bullish candle open that's just simply a break of structure on the lower time frame so it's just added confirmation into the markets 
So again, just to go over that a little bit, a um, little bit, you know, briefly. Liquidity sweep, aggressive shift to the downside, and it's important to look for that aggressive shift. You don't want a sluggish move for price to, you know, come back into this POI slowly and then break. You know, it's you still can trade that. Don't get me wrong. But it's not going to be as high probability. It's important to think of probabilities. It's not going to be as high probability as opposed to price aggressively shifting to that downside. Because that where, that is where the momentum is heading. That's where the momentum is going. You want to be trading in, in the direction of the uh, momentum, right? You don't want to be, you know, seeing a chalk here where it's sluggish. Sometimes it will do that and work out. Sometimes it will do that and then continue higher. Okay? It just is what I do is nothing is 100% trading. That's why it's so important to think in sample sizes, not just in the next trade or the trade after that or trade after that. Okay? Also, as I'm going to mention here as well, uh, liquidity can come in many forms. It can come in the form of an Asia session. So the five-hour period window, if you're, my, if you're in my mentorship, um, you'll understand exactly what the Asia session is. But if you don't, it's a five-hour period window in which uh, price pretty much doesn't consolidate, but it's like a quite a liquidated area. So when London comes around, price will sweep that Asia session and that'll be like a liquidity sweep and that'll be, you, you know, that's, that, that classes as liquidity pretty much. And it's a very common way and an approach uh, in our trading system in which uh, we all we all trade. Excuse me, I'm just getting a bunch of Discord messages, so I'm just going to mute that so I can focus because it, it throws me off a little bit. But um, yeah, if you want in my mentorship, make sure you go ahead and check it out, guys, because it is the ultimate mentorship and the last course you'll ever need. I promise you. Um, a lot of people who join it, they don't really take it serious. They don't really get involved in the one-to-ones with me. You know, I, I go live pretty much on Discord every day as well. You're more than welcome to join that 8 a.m. UK time in the morning. I'm in there for a couple hours, a few hours with my mates, and we're just trading. You're more than welcome to join as well. So make sure you go ahead and check that out if that's something that interests you. If you're a complete beginner to trading, I would highly recommend that you go on Baby Pips or YouTube before you even look at investing into mentorship. If you're, you know, if you're new and you want to take it serious and you want to invest into mentorship and you want to take that serious, then fine. That's fair enough. We teach beginners. We teach skilled traders that are looking for the extra 10% push. We teach them from all types of levels. But anyway, enough of me waffling. Let's just jump straight back into the video. Like I said, liquidity can come in many forms. Asia session, equal lows, equal highs, support and resistance zones, previous daily low, previous daily high, weekly high, weekly low. It can come in many, many forms. So it's up to you. It's just you want to see a liquidity sweep followed by an aggressive impulsive market shift to the downside or upside, depends on obviously which way you're trading. And then a pullback to the breaker, candle confirmation, and then look to target, you know, nice one to three, one to five. Or if you're trading with high time frame anticipation, then you want to be trading with the, obviously, you know, the high time frame. So for example, the previous, you know, daily low that you're looking to target into, if it took out the previous daily high, you're going to be wanting to trade down into that previous daily low as that's a liquidity area, right? It's better to target the liquidity areas as opposed to just targeting random areas. You want to be trading with purpose and you want to be trading with clarity, you know, not just randomness. Okay, you want to build a bias, you want to build a narrative to your trade, you want to make it make sense and obviously take only the high probability setups. And uh, like I said, I gave you guys an example on just, uh, you know, low probability versus high probability breaker structure or a chuck. You know, a sluggish one isn't going to be as high probability as a, a impulsive one. Okay, don't get me wrong. Sometimes it'll be fundamentally driven and then it'll be like sort of a fake out for price to continue higher. So it's up to you to spot the difference between a fundamentally driven move. Just, you know, pretty much just looking around trading news time, just trying to avoid it or at least cut your risk if you're already on a, in a position. Um, but yeah. Uh, so like I said, liquidity can come in many forms. Once that liquidity is acquired and been swept and then chocks in the opposite direction, that is the signal to get into the trade. Now I'm going to jump into a live example and show you guys and then we can just go, go from there pretty much. So let me just make this a little bit smaller. So as you can see here, this is from your dollar on the February 6th. So it's actually from today. But if you're watching the video later on, then it's from February the 6th, 2024. And this is around, I believe, uh, 8.25 in the morning. This is a fantastic trade, um, absolute textbook. And um, yeah, so actually, I believe this trade is from the February 5th, but I screenshot on the February 6th. But anyways, as you can see here, right, we had this liquidity here, which is also the Asia session on the higher time frame, which is the left. You can't see that here on the one minute though and also you got some equal highs here on the uh, m1 as well and also on the 15 minute this is a big 15 minute supply zone in which there's going to be many sellers looking to enter from both smc S ict traders whatever there's a lot of sellers at this area so they're going to be induced anyways what i'm trying to say is this is a big liquidity area that liquidity has been swept here it doesn't have to just you know go miles ahead or 
you know it, it can be as simple as around here like it is now all right that's it a clear valid liquidity sweep prices are swept liquidity there we've came back down we violated this previous demand zone obviously that's what a breaker is it violates the demand zone on the flip side it's a supply okay that's why i try and simplify my trading and my on my, on my course as well i simplify it so an order block that i'm looking to sell from i refer to it as a supply zone a breaker that's now turned from a demand to a supply i call it a supply um now turned into a demand from a supply I just refer to it as you know whatever in the direction I'm trading from. I'm just trying to simplify the process because too many too many people are complicated. There's so many different terminologies and names for loads of different things. When in reality, it should be kept simple. Trading is better when it's left simple. So that's what my aim is. Anyways, as you can see here, sweat that liquidity. We came back down here, aggressively shifted to the downside. We have this chalk here as well, and then we pull back into the breaker. Now note here. This here and this example is not an engulfing candle. I mean, if you're looking for any bit of bearish reaction or bullish reaction in a bullish case, but in this case, if you're looking for any bit of bearish reaction, then that sometimes works, but it has higher probability. Again, it's important to factor in high probability setups. It's higher probability to look for um, an actual engulfing that closes below the previous candle open high. Uh, open, sorry. Okay. So as you can see here, this is the bullish candle open. And then obviously, if you look to the right, the price didn't come back below didn't close below it anyways we had another bullish engulfing candle here not a bullish candle and then we get the bearish engulfing which closes below the previous uh, bearish candle okay then that is where you want to enter from this will give you a few seconds to enter from it uh what i would recommend if you're trading this i would recommend that you have predefined stop loss in in terms of the pips so for me i'd probably just measure the zone uh, probably you know at least add five pips just so you're safe because if you're trading the one minute time frame and you have stops like this you're only going to be you know be trading around five to eight pips max stop loss okay also i just quickly want to mention as well in terms of where you should put your stop loss obviously you can have it above the zone but you can also get away with it sometimes here but i wouldn't recommend that if you're just starting out i'd highly recommend you just have your stops above the overall high or low and focus on the smaller consistent winners because not only is it going to be better psychologically for you and healthier but it's also going to be just be better and it's going to be more consistent long term um, until you truly test it out and you start seeing results then maybe yes you can you know see what you see what the difference is in terms of the results from placing your stops here or above here or here you can go ahead and do that but if, if you are beginning out and you, you know you're, you're very new to this i wouldn't rush into it i'd give it at least a few months trading uh, even on the demo account just practicing and just keep the stops above the overall swing highs or lows it's just very better to opt in for that and it's you know it's just a lot more consistent long term and like i said it's just better psychologically and when we're trading we won't always want to be in the right frame of mind it's obviously very hard to sometimes when you're taking a bunch of losses in a row but that's just the nature of the business okay we are going to take a bunch of losses in a row but by doing this long term you are going to be better psychologically and you're going to feel more healthier and fit to be trading as opposed to being stopped out all the bloody time Anyways, as you can see here, we get this bearish engulfing candle. If you're one of them, if you have like a like a machine like um, like magic keys, like I do, I have, a, I have the on not the on screen but the physical one. I have one of them plugged into my computer that I can easily execute the trade with. But I know a lot of you don't, and I don't really. I mean, I would recommend the magic keys, but I, if you just if you're new to it, I wouldn't rush into it and just buy the magic keys for the sake of it. I just start out by setting predefined stop loss in terms of pips. There's also free softwares out there as well. That I'm pretty sure um, I'll have to double check that though because it is discussed in our Discord. I'm um, just trying to think of the name of it. I'm sure it is. Um, it was one of the, on on the MetaCourt's uh, website. It was a, a free one to like Magic Keys, like the on-screen one, but it was like a free version, and that was pretty good. I know a couple of my members use that, but I have forgotten the name. So if you are on my Discord, just bring it up in the Discord, and uh, I should be able to get the name for you. Anyways, bearish engulfing candle here. That's a great entry. Stops above the zone for me personally, above the zone. But like I said, if you're you know new, start off above the high. And then you can't really see the targets here, but simply I was just looking to target the previous daily low, and also lined up. I was looking to take partials as well at the Asia low as well. Um, it also swept the Asia, Asia high. It also took out the previous daily high, so um, that's a good indication to go short. Okay, and vice versa. If it took out the daily low on the Asia low, then that could be a good indication to go long. So if you get like a long. Uh, entry signal then it's going to just line up with your bias right so again just quickly go over it swept liquidity here 
shift to the downside, but just again, focus on the move, okay? This is not like a sluggish move, like, you know, over here. This is not a sluggish move. Like if this was a chalk here, that's a very sluggish move to get a chalk, as opposed to this here. This is a very aggressive move to the downside. Pull back to the previous demand that got violated. That's now turned to supply zone. Bearish engulfing candle, which is your entry trigger. And then obviously you're targeting wherever you want to target. That's down to you. And then another example, I'll just do you guys another example. You know what? I'll probably even chuck in another couple of examples um, on trading breakers as well. Entering off in balance, potentially. I'll, sh I'll show you that example. Yeah, I will do. Why not? Let's do that in a minute. Anyways, if you just take a look here, as you can see here, this took out liquidity, which is also the Asia low. As you can see here, we chalk bullish here. We got this move to the upside here. Now, this wasn't as impulsive to the previous one, but it doesn't always have to be like a straight, predominantly bullish candle market. There can be some bearish candles within that move. I'm just trying to think in terms of probabilities, right? I prefer to take this setup, not that one, this setup compared to this one all day long, just because based on the move, okay? But I still take this trade, that's fine. All right, this is still about the chart, we sweat liquidity. I'm just looking for, you know, once I've figured out my directional bias and I have that bias, I am simply waiting for price to just give me an entry trigger along with what my bias is. All right, a lot of people build the bias and then trade the opposite way. You shouldn't do that. You should build the bias and trade within that bias. As you can see here, we the chalk bullish here, we get these bullish candles. And now obviously you've got the premium discount here as well. We've got some imbalance down here as well. We have this imbalance here. And simply what I'm looking for is a bullish candle. The price comes back down, fills this imbalance here. As you can see, also taps into the discounted part of the uh, of the range. And then um, obviously from there, you know, we get a bullish candle. We enter there based on that bullish candle here. And obviously again, price comes back down into it, into the discounted part again, into, into this sort of new range here that's marked up. Again, it's still a valid entry signal that you could have took a long off here. Well, you know, price tapped into some imbalance here, uh, bullishing off a candle, and you could have had your stops below here, but obviously here to be safer. Or even here, again, if you're a beginner, just start off here. And then pretty much just looking to target the overall highs. This here was an M15 supply chain. This here was an Asia high. So 2.37% at the Asia high, or six, uh, sorry, 4.61% at the M15 supply chain. Now, if we just go back here again, we got M1 discount in balance film, bullish engulfing candle entry, SL below at range low. Now in balance, this just refers to um, like there's a gap in the market. So there's pretty much buyers and sellers. Is, and the balance happens when buyers and sellers don't get a fair chance of liquidity. And it's also commonly referred to as a FVG or fair value gap in this industry. Um, like I said, I'll do more videos on this later on. But uh, yeah, we got the bullish engulfing candle, which is our candle entry, SL below the range low. And then we're just looking to target the overall Asia high. I, I personally target the Asia high. You could have took off partials and you could have targeted into this, you know, M15 supply chain as well. If you follow me on Instagram or even like in my mentorship, you'll know exactly what a supply chain or demand chain is. It's a very good way to spot who's in control and um, it provides a lot of opportunities as well. Now, talking about this scaling opportunity here, we have this little mini range here. We have this high and this low. And obviously price comes back down, fills an imbalance and also taps into this demand zone, which is also referred to as an order block. Like I said, I'm just simplifying my trading for me and myself and my students. We're just trying to simplify as much as possible. And as you can see there, also slightly be closed above the previous candle, uh, well, the bearish candle open, indicating a good uh, buy opportunity there. So we took an entry there, stops below the range and targeting again, the Asia high or up here. Okay. Um, so yeah. The opportunities are there. You just have to spot them. I'd go. Uh, I'd recommend you, you know, go and check this out and go and test it yourself. You know, like I said, don't think in well the next two, three trades. Think in sample sizes. But, you know, twenty to twenty-five trades. Even Mark Douglas said it. Right. You wanna you wanna take trading advice from him. He's a legend. Mark Douglas said it best. Think in sample sizes. Take at least twenty trades, and that's that should give you enough information about the system you're trading. Um, obviously, like I said, this is completely just focusing on the M1, but I would recommend you, you know, apply higher time frame um, analysis in with it as well. So, you know, trading with the higher time frame, that's very important as opposed to just trading strictly the M1. You want to be trading the higher time frame, you want to be marking the liquidity areas where price is, you know, likely to head to next. It's all about anticipating moves, etc, etc. 
and then just trading it in the direction on the lower tank and just trying to find a reasonable entry like like this is an entry model here so if you're already one of them who has uh, you know high time reduction or bias nailed down to a T then this video may be the video that you may only need um, this is a very consistent way to trade him. This is a way that I teach my students to trade as well And I'd highly recommend like I said go and test it out now if you haven't already go and take some screenshots of this if you need to I Might if I can put the link below as well And what I will do is just because why not we're on a bloody roll here I'll go ahead and show you another example that I shared earlier. This is all shared in my discord as well and also guys if you haven't already i have a free discord channel make sure you get yourself involved in that sometimes i'll be talking in the chat or not there's going to be live up to dates um like events and things like that i just want to host in the future so if you aren't already in the free discord make sure you go ahead and check that out as well like i mentioned before all links will be down below in the description go ahead and check all them out got some amazing links over there to some you know prop firms that you should check out some brokers i'd recommend etc so you know, I've even got a free PDF on my website. I'm trying to provide as much free value as well as much as I can. Uh, so I've got a bunch of free stuff out there as well. I've got a Notion template as well, which is where you can journal and track all your trades. Got a bunch of stuff for you guys and the cool stuff for you guys to check out. Anyways, <clears throat> looking at this bit of... Um, and, uh, this is like another entry model, but a bit similar. So in this previous entry model, we we're focusing on like M1 breakers like this. This is an M1. Uh, well, this is not really the break, but this is an imbalance. This is just sort of added. But this one here was an M1 breaker, right? Uh, that's an imbalance entry. So you're getting all the entry models here. Anyways, this one here is a high time frame breaker, right? And an imbalance film. And I'll show you an example of an entry of that as well in the markets because I don't want to just show you textbook setups like this and not back it up with enough, you know, with data of real life markets. That's just, you know... I don't know, whatever you want to say. I was going to say something to say, but I don't think I can say that on YouTube. But anyways, let's just show you. As you can see here, right, again, as with anything or the, or the way in trading, it's better with session timing slash catching open volume when the market is aggressively shifting in one direction, okay? Because if price, if, if, if price is moving quite sluggish, it's not going to really respect breakers. It'll probably come back to the extremes better as opposed to, Trading breakers when price is trending nicely and healthily yeah, in, in one direction, right? Or quite an aggressive market in a certain direction. That's when it's better to trade breakers. As you can see here, this is a high time frame zone. Price comes down, breaks below the zone. It may consolidate in the area. It doesn't have to. This is just there as an example. This could also be liquidity for price to sweep here as well. That's something that happens quite a lot. But as you can see here, we came back, uh, well, we broke below this high time from zone. We come back into it and we get this break and mitigation here. Then we get a chalk to the downside. Again, aggressive shift to the downside. And then we pull back into the imbalance. A bearish engulfing candle stops below, um, sorry, above the range high. And again, just looking to target wherever you want to target. Um, so as you can see, high time and breaker. A chalk and pull back to imbalance or supply. Obviously, I just refer to it as a supply. Uh, just in for my trading again i probably said that about 10 times already if i if, honestly if you find if you, if you find me repeat myself quite a lot if you put a pound to it every time you'd be fucking rich so uh yeah i do apologize for my french and i also apologize for repeating myself quite a lot but i just want to try and get it stuck stuck into your subconscious mind rather than just saying it once and you forget them. and again if you haven't took any notes make sure you're taking notes guys you need to get writing down i know it's a writing down is very important why because if you don't write things down we will forget okay Especially when trading, if you make a mistake during the day, write that mistake down. Because if you weren't to write that mistake down, you would forget about that mistake and you wouldn't even progress. So that's just one reason why you should start writing down if you haven't already. Okay. And a quick one as well. When it comes to imbalances and order blocks and breaker blocks, try and factor in the imbalances around the order block and try and draw up the zone from the imbalance rather than just the tight order block. Okay. Because sometimes it will tap into the imbalance and then move as opposed to the order block that you had marked up so if you find yourself in that situation just factor in the imbalance that's enough reason for price to <clears throat> move and that should be a good entry signal as well rather than just the order block alone right <clears throat> anyways again same candle entry bearish bullish engulfing highly recommend you check that out so what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you guys an example a real life example of this is what i've just explained right now so I'll go ahead and screenshot, not screenshot, but share this one here because it is, again, shared in my, the resources channel on my Discord. And as you can see here, guys. Boom. 
right? Price comes back down, breaks below this high time frame demand zone, which has now turned into supply zone, aka a breaker. We came back up, we tapped into this area, we filled some imbalance as well. And then we got a chalk to the downside. Obviously, you know, there's more bearish candles here to reach this downside. Blah, blah, you, you, you know the score, lads. Uh, guys and gals, sorry. You know the score. We chalk here. We have a slight imbalance here as well. And then what we're simply looking for is price to pull back into this imbalance, a bearishing open candle. Then we're going to enter the trade with a stop above the high. Or, you know, above the zone, but that's a bit too tight in my opinion. And especially in this case, I definitely have my stops above the high in this case. Then we're just simply looking to target, you know, whether you want to target this low here for a nice one to two, one to three, or target wherever you want to target. We mentioned that many times, but where you want to target is obviously up to you. I can do videos on that, no problem at all. No problem, Jose. Uh, I'll show you this other example and how the trade actually played out. So this is how the trade actually played out. And then, well, not how the trade played out, but I'll show you how the trade played out in a minute. As you can see here, okay, we've got a bit more on depth onto it. There we go. Break of mitigation, imbalance fill, in which you get here. Then we get this bearishing of the candle, it obviously closes below this previous bullish candle open. We close below that, we close here, and this is where we want to enter from. Stops above the high, then again, targeting the higher time frame narrative. This, ladies and gentlemen, is how the trade actually played out. Like that. And boom. No drawdown. Obviously, it's not always going to be like this. Like, if you look at this here, there was a tiny little bit of drawdown. Um, sometimes, you know, well, I noticed that this is probably better for trading around prop firms as well because there is literally little to no drawdown in these setups, especially when taking candle entries. Even if you don't want to tra uh, trade this entry model, that's absolutely fine. However, I don't know why you'd be watching this video. Anyways, what I would recommend is if you don't want to trade this entry model and you already have a profitable way of trading, or even if you're a break-even trader or a bit of a losing trader, just try implementing this candle entry. It's a very simple, yes, the risk to reward may be a little bit less, but hey, we're focusing on the smaller consistent winners. Okay, if you're always just taking trades blindly off a zone with limit orders, you're going to be stopped out a lot of the time as opposed to waiting for that candle entry. Okay, I will show you another example of uh, why you should take a candle entry. And uh, this is all credits to one of my top students called Boris. So shout out to Boris if you're watching this, Boris, a legend in the community. Uh, and I'll show you exactly why you should be taking candle entries. Okay. That is why, ladies and gentlemen, you should be taking candle entries. Because as you see here, and this isn't just, you know, you may be thinking, well, that's not a valid zone because it's an inducement. Okay. It doesn't matter. This could happen on an extreme zone sometimes that you're trading from. Okay. As you can see here, just regardless of what you're thinking right now, why you shouldn't enter here. I know a lot of you are going to be trying to, you know, say, I shouldn't enter there because it's an inducement. Look, I get it. Okay. But I'm just trying to think for you when you're taking extreme zones, you'll notice a lot of you will be taking a lot of losses because you'll just randomly set limit orders off a zone. Whereas if you wait for that candle entry, it'll just help you reduce losses. Like I said, it's not 100%. Nothing's 100% in trading. Get that mentality out of your head. Uh, but as you can see here, price comes up into the supply area. We get no reaction whatsoever. But I know there'll be some people setting a limit order off there with a stops above here and getting stopped out and then crying why it didn't work out. Because if you waited for that little candle confirmation entry, you would have been in the trade. Same here, right? We came back up. We took out this here. Again, that could be a liquidity sweep, whatever. We come into this zone and we close below this previous bearish candle open and uh boom we come back down we close below it and that is where you want to be entering from okay lots above here or here to be safer if you're a beginner here i've said it like 10 times now i think put a penny in every time i say it you'll be rich as fuck but anyways as you can see there entry off there and targeting wherever you want to target we just, we discussed this a lot as well but that's a, a great example thank you boris w in the chat with boris there that's a great example on why you should be taking candle entries it's a truly game changer it truly is uh but anyways going back to this trade anyways just a quick one just to, before we end the video I don't want to be wasting a lot of your guys' time. Time is precious. We don't get it back. So uh, we want to be spending every minute of our life absolutely smashing it. But as you can see here, mitigation of the breaker. Filled some imbalance. Shifted down our side. Also chucked here as well. Filled this imbalance. Bursting over the candle. 
entry there stops with the high target and wherever you want to target and that's it bob's your uncle guys so thank you for watching any questions or issues or anything like that any feedback just make sure you're dropping my dms on instagram or twitter or facebook or my email send me an email okay i'll get to it as soon as i can uh probably won't be straight away because i'm not gonna lie my dummy, dms my dummies my dms sorry are flooded so i will get back to them as soon as i can and uh, yeah, like I mentioned already during the video, if you haven't already, make sure you go ahead and check out my mentorship if you're looking to take them seriously. I will literally hold your hand and guide you until you become successful, okay? Only if you're willing to put in the work. I'm not just going to say to anyone like random Joe down the road, you know, you're not going to be a successful trader if you're not willing to put in the work. You need to put in the work your side and that will help you along with any questions, issues and things like that. And there will also be opportunities and where you can get on one-to-one -one with me. And you can join my live calls in the Discord as well. We can mark up some charts together. We can go over some trade re uh, recaps or breakdowns, whatever you want to call it, case studies. We can go over many things. So if you haven't already checked that out, guys, make sure you head, uh, go ahead and check that out. I'm more than happy to help you um, smash these uh, trading markets. Okay. So thank you guys for watching. Take care and have a lovely rest of the week. And I hope you absolutely smash it this week. Go ahead and test this strategy out, guys.